Here he comes, here he comes, then the trumpets and the drums, here he comes, on the long Cassidy, here he comes. Red Connors and I had been in the saddle since daybreak. We were still a half a dozen miles from our destination, the town of Los Pinos, down near the border. It was important that we get there. When the commanding officer back at Fort Defiance had sent for me and explained why 20 cases of stolen army rifles and ammunition had to be recovered, we headed for Los Pinos. It had all begun three days ago. The shipment of rifles and ammunition on its way to Fort Defiance had been held up and hijacked not far from Los Pinos. The Army had reason to believe that the men who had done the hijacking were in the pay of Pablo Torres, a would-be Mexican revolutionist. With those guns in his hands, Torres would be able to take others, and there would be trouble on the border. But the Army believed that the guns were still hidden somewhere in the Los Pinos area, waiting for a chance to be smuggled across the Mexican border. It was my mission to help see to it that Pablo Torres never got those guns. By the bell, Senora. Oh, no, it would cost a fortune to get one big enough to go around my middle. But <laughs> <laughs> well, that is no problem. I sell you two. That's your wow. You know, there's not much of a place, Hoppy. No, it isn't. Can't see how we can find any excitement here. Oh, not already. Listen, will you do me a favor? Sure, anything you ask. I know this is affecting an awful lot from you, but we're here on serious business. Would you please try to keep out of trouble? Oh, you know I never mean to start things, Hoppy. It's just that I'm a good-natured guy and folks well, take, take advantage, advantage of it. I must have said that before. Yeah. Well, now that we're here, let's eat. We're not going to do anything until after I've talked to Captain Sterling. Who's he? Oh, he's a fellow I met down the board. Hey, you! Hop along, Cassidy. Well, I ain't seen you for ten years, and you ain't changed a bit. Why, Mammy Taylor! <laughs> In the flesh. I'd say. Well, I guess I am a little big at that. Mammy, this is my saddle pal, Red Connor. Pleased to meet you, Red. Any friend of Hoppy's is a friend of mine. Amy used to sing at a dance hall over Arizona way. Yeah, they used to call me the two-ton canary. <laughs> you really weigh that much? Red, there's two things you never ask a woman. How much she weighs and how old she is. <laughs> Say, Hoppy, what are you doing here in these parts? I was just about to ask you the same question. Well, I saved up my money, and about five years ago, I retired. Bought myself a little ranch a few miles out of town. And six months ago, what do you think? They elected me town marshal, and we're mighty proud of the way we've cleaned up Los Pinos. Now I've seen everything. A woman town marshal parading around with a cap pistol on her hip. Wonder what she'd do if she ever had to use that. Red, I've never known anyone that keeps asking for it as much as you do. My well, Mamie can take that gun and... Hey, you! Daly! Yeah? What do you want, Mamie? You know there's a law against drinking on the streets in Los Pinos. That goes for you, too. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> See what I mean? Come here, Daly. That's what I call fair country shooting. Maybe you always was a good shot. Man, my hat's off to you. If you just give me the word, I'll turn that young varmint Daly over my knee and spank him. You're going to do what to who, loudmouth? <laughs> Wait a minute, Red. On your way, Daly. You want to cut in on this deal? Not unless I'm invited. <clears throat> What's the matter? Yellow? That's an invitation. <laughs> I knew it. I knew that Cassidy would give you the lesson you've been needing. Break it up, folks. Break it up. It's just a friendly little argument. Daly here is my foreman out at the ranch. He is a bad guy. But when he's drinking, he gets a little too big for his britches. Now you get along out to the ranch and behave yourself. No hard feeling? 
No, not right now. Why are you staying in town? Oh, I don't know. Got any ideas? Well, as long as you're in the neighborhood, why don't you and Red stay out my place? I got plenty of room. Yeah, that's nice of you, Mamie. I don't know how busy we're gonna be. But if we can make it, I'm not gonna miss the chance of eating some more of that good home cooking of yours. Uh, be glad to have you any time, Hoppy. And you can't miss my place. Just follow the road straight ahead. Good. If we can make it, we'll be there. Hey, Red. Give us a hand. Oh, Hoppy, she can cook. She can. What are you waiting for? So long, Hoppy. So long, baby. You know, all in all, she's quite a gal, Hoppy. I knew it. You knew what? I knew sooner or later you're going to fall for some woman. Fall for now, Hoppy. Mamie! <laughs> senor, senor, you would like to buy the belts? No. They are hand tooled and muy barato. Very cheap. Uh, Quanta do they cost it? How do you language Spanish? Eh? Is that what that was? Senor, mi amigo Red Connors is poco estupido. I agree with you, Cassidy. I've been watching him. He does seem a little stupid. <laughs> Why are you tamale? Wait, wait a minute. minute. Wait a minute. This is Captain Lee Sterling, Criminal Investigation Division, U.S. Army. He's the man I was to meet. Glad to know you. Aren't you hungry? I sure am, Hoppy. I... Get yourself a cup of coffee. It's a great guy. How long have you been in town? Came here from the border station as soon as he got wind of the hijacking. Or anything new? The positive the rifles are still on this side of the border. We've narrowed our search down to within a point of 10 miles from here. Sounds like they could be hidden in one of those caves in Limestone Canyon. I thought of that, too. There's hundreds of caves in the canyon. I only had time to check a few of them. We'll check them all if we have to. Meanwhile, I suppose you got patrols and all the border crossings. Most of them. But it'd take a whole army to patrol the entire border. How many men have you got here in Los Pinos? Four. All in civilian clothes. Good. Can they suspect? Just one. A man who is known to have been friendly with Pablo Torres. He's got a prison record. Stiff time in Leavenworth. Who is he? The gent you knocked down. Daly. Daly? How about Mamie Taylor? We check carefully. Her record's as clean as a whistle. Good. All right, I'll take these two. Uh, gracias, senor. Gracias. Quanto? Cinco peso. Ah, oh, no. Un peso. One peso. That's better. Have your men ready to write on a minute's notice. I'll be staying in Mamie Taylor's place. If anything comes up, I'll get word to you through that. Adios, amigo. Coffee, huh? Oh, I was hungry. Here's a little present for you. Have you sure got the craziest people for friends? I sure have. But I wouldn't trade any of you. Say, I've decided to accept Mamie's invitation to stay at her place so I can learn a little more about that form of hers. How come Mamie likes you so much after all these years? Oh, I did her a little favor once. What was it? Nothing. Besides, it's a long story. You'll probably hear all about it when you get out there anyhow. Mamie's quite a yacker. Come on, let's go. Friends of yours from town are here. Hi, Mimi. Hoppy. I found that we have to be around for a while, so if that invitation still goes. You're more than welcome, Hoppy. 
You got a nice place here. I think so. It looks like you had a good year for hay. Best I've had so far. The boys just finished bailing that batch yesterday. Getting a good price for it, too. Good. Well, you better come on in. You'll just have time to wash up before supper's ready. We'll be in as soon as we take care of the horses. Well, Mamie, if anything, your cooking's better than it used to be. <laughs> you folks will excuse me. I got some chores to take care of. Got to get a load of hay out first thing in the morning. Remember now, Daly, no drinking. All right, Mamie. You know, he don't seem at all like he did in town today. Well, we had a little heart-to-heart -heart talk when I got home. <laughs> <laughs> How about another piece of pie, Hoppy? Oh, no, thanks. <laughs> How about you, Red? Well, if you insist, just a little smidgen. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's the way I like to see people eat my cooking. <laughs> but I can't understand where he puts it all. <laughs> Mamie, how long has Daly worked for you? A little over three months. Well, the looks of your ranch, he's done a pretty good job. Well, outside of the fact that he's stubborn and drinks a little now and then, he turned out to be a pretty good gamble on my part. What do you mean? Well, you see, I knew when I hired him that he had a record and that he'd serve time. Oh? But I kind of like to give people a second chance. Oh, you always were that way. I remember over in Tucson how he used to mother the girls and take care of the sick. Listen to the man talk. <laughs> I remember a lot of things that he used to do for others. Why, if it hadn't been for him, I wouldn't even be here today. Oh, is that so? I was singing in a dance hall in Tucson about 10 years ago. And one night a fire broke out in the place. And I was trapped in my dressing room, overcome by the smoke. Hoppy finds out that I'm in there, and he fought his way through that roaring fire to my dressing room and carried me out to safety. What a job that must have been. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're through patting me on the back, I'm going to get some sleep. I'll be with you as soon as I finish the pie. All right, Red. I wish you could stop over for a while, Hoppy. I don't know. It all depends. <laughs> well, what with all my gabbing about the old days, you still haven't told me what you're doing here in this neighborhood. Oh, we just... But you heard about them army guns being hijacked? Sure. But that's not my department. I'm only the town marshal. That's a job for a government man. What do you think me and Hoppy's doing here? Well, I should have thought of that, Hoppy. Well, you can depend upon me to keep my mouth shut. Have you got any leads? Any ideas? No, not a thing. I'm up against a blank wall. Well, if there's anything I can do... If there's anything you can do, I'll call on you, Mamie. Good night. Good night, Hoppy. You get yourself a good night's rest, and in the morning you can start looking around. Maybe the caves over in Limestone Canyon. Yeah, sounds like a good idea. Good night, Mamie. Good night. Come on, Red. Mamie, that was sure a good pie. Good night. Good night, Red. Red was in his usual good form, getting in about 15 snores a minute. But somehow tonight it didn't bother me. But what did was remembering the worried look on Mamie's face when Red dropped the news about my being on the gun running case. myself believe that Mamie was in on the deal. But I kept remembering the old saying, when a good sheepdog turns bad, he's worse than a wolf. But whatever had happened with Mamie, now I was sure that the guns were hidden on the ranch. And sooner or later, Daly would lead me to them. I had made up my mind to keep an eye on that bunkhouse till something developed. So I just sat and waited. I had kept watch all through the rest of the night, but there had been no further sign of Daly until just after daylight, when he had come out with his men to load the shipment of hay and send it on its way. Wonderful fight. Well, 
that dream's liable to come true before the day's over. Come on, get your clothes on. Now I know I'm on the right track. That's a small load of hay to be taken to market. And why the armed guard? just a few minutes ago when I got up. Breakfast will be ready in 10 minutes. Good, that'll just give us time to take care of the horses. Fred, you better get the saddles on our horses. We may have to leave here in a hurry. Where are we going? I'm gonna take a look around. I may not have to wait for Daly to make the first move. I'd given the inside of the barn a going over. There was nothing there that could give me a possible clue to the hiding place of the guns. But a few yards away from the back of the barn, a patch of freshly turned earth attracted my attention. I'd half expected to find the cases of rifles hidden under the turned earth. But what I did find was a sure clue that they had been hidden on the ranch. The piece of charred wood I held in my hand bore the imprint of the United States Army Arsenal at Rock Island. The dirt had been spread over the remains of a bonfire. Now the picture was clear in my mind. The stolen guns had been brought here, unpacked, and the cases burned. Then they had been repacked in the last place anyone would think of looking for them, in bales of hay. The rest of it formed a pattern. When Mamie had found out last night that I was acting for the Army, she had decided to take no chances and had immediately sent the rifles to a safer place until the hunt had cooled off. Then an innocent-looking load of hay could be sent across the border to Pablo Torres. Where those bales were now was the important question. Maybe I could trick Mamie into giving me a hint. Red, look at that platter of bacon and eggs. I see your boys hauled some hay away bright and early this morning. Never mind the stalling. Get your hands up, both of you. Now back up. Now turn around. What's your idea? The idea is that I'm going to see that those rifles get through to Torres. I saw you poking around in what was left of the bonfire. Hoppy, how much did you find out? Just about everything, maybe. I should have known you would. Daly! Yeah, Mamie? Cassidy is wise to us. You follow those rifles and see that they get across. I'll take care of Cassidy. Follow the wagon. I'll catch up with you. You might as well sit down and be comfortable, gentlemen. You're going to have a long wait. I'm going to get my guns and go after those rifles, Mamie. Please don't make me shoot you, Hoppy. I'm gambling you won't shoot me in the back. You win, Hoppy. Hold it, Cassidy. Get your hands back up. You too. Don't try any tricks. Maybe he'll tell you I'm just about as good as she is with a gun. Don't you realize that you're letting down the people who are depending on you? Besides giving up the blood money he's going to get from Taurus. But I wasn't going to take any of the money, Red. Maybe he was doing it just for the poor, downtrodden people of Sonora. That's right, Hoppy. When Daly first brought Torres here, Torres convinced me that those guns were going to be used only in the interests of the poor people. He promised reforms. They'd have land, they'd have peace and prosperity. You've been sold a bill of goods, Mamie. I've heard that line before. 
All would-be dictators use it. And as for Pavla Torres, I've known him for years. He's no patriot. He's a cold-blooded, ruthless killer willing to sacrifice anything or anybody for power. There have been dictators and would-be dictators before this. And there probably will be in the years to come. No matter what they call themselves, they all use the same lying promises to get control. Once they're in power, the only thing their people get is more poverty and more bloodshed. Don't you understand it, Mamie? It's all very pretty, Cassidy. But Mamie and me ain't figuring on spending the rest of our lives in the federal penitentiary all on the count of you. You're through talking. Thanks for straightening me out, Hoppy. Get your guns. Sure, it. Just wait that wagon go. Along the Los Pinos Road. By now, they should be within a half hour of the border. Maybe there's still time to catch them. Come, Come on, Will. and headed to the border. into that dry wash, regulations and red tape would prevent us following further, and the rifles would be in Pablo Torres's hands. heart that made her make the mistake. She's been a big help to us. Shall we give her the break? Since it's you who's asking, Hoppy, use your own judgment. I'll back it up. Thanks, Lee. Go ahead, Hoppy. All right, Hoppy, put them on. I'm ready to take what's coming to me. Do you have any further instructions for me, Captain Sterling? None, Cassidy. Since the rifles are on their way to Fort Defiance under convoy, and my prisoners will soon be behind bars, I'll report your mission is accomplished. Good day, sir. Good day, sir. Well, Mamie, you heard what the man said. Now you head for home, and nobody will ever know anything about your part in this deal. Bless you, Poppy. I'll never make the same mistake again. I know you won't. The next time I'm down this way, I'll stop in and say hello. And there'll be a place for you in my house, as well as in my heart. Goodbye, Hoppy. Goodbye, ma'am. Good luck. Good luck to you. Well, you had enough excitement for one day? 
Well, I didn't care so much for the first 23 hours, but that last hour was sure a corker. <laughs> I wish you was just beginning. Oh, I wouldn't worry too much about you. Sooner or later, you'll do something the hard way, and we'll be in it up to our neck all over again. You think so? How can we miss? <laughs> That's what the mark wanted. Hop along Cassidy, hop along Cassidy, he'll return soon again, there's no use to say goodbye. Here he comes, here he comes, there's the trumpets, there's the drums, here he comes, hop along Cassidy. something like this before, and I had the feeling that come nightfall, the town of San Marcos would be ripe for a sample of crude, old-fashioned Western justice, a lynching. I could tell it with the whispers of the people in the street, the way they kept watching the jail. And their intended victim was young Carlos Valero, the son of my longtime friend, Don Ramon. Hey, Hoppy. Yes, Red? I think Valero's coming out of it. Good. Get me a cup of water, will you, Red? Just an hour ago, Red and I had ridden into the border town of San Marcos on our way to pick up some cattle at the Valero Ranch and had learned that Valero, still unconscious from a beating, was being held by the sheriff on a charge of murdering a rancher by the name of Taggart. Taggart must have got one good lick in before Valero knifed him. Here, Carlos. Drink some of this. You'll be all right. Take it easy. That's good. Senor Cassidy, my friend. Sheriff. Jail. Senor Cassidy, why am I here? Has this been a bad dream? Your knife and Taggart's back weren't no dream. My knife? Taggart? Sheriff, I've known Valera since he was a kid. I knew his father before that. They're not the kind that go around sticking people in the back. All I know is what I saw. And there's always a first time for everything. Carlos, you want to try to tell me what happened? I'm so mixed up, Senor Hoppy. But this, I swear to you, is the truth. Yesterday, I received a note from Trini. And who is Trini? She's a girl who works in the dance hall. She said for me to meet her in her room at the hotel at midnight. Just as I walked into her room, something hit me over the head. And that's all I remember. And what happened to this note that Trini sent you? I have it here. Be in my room at the hotel at midnight tonight is important to you, Trini. Oh, my head. And you just take it easy for a few minutes. I want time to think this out. We'll be right handy here. Do you believe Valero's story? Well, of course I do. Well, I'm not dumb enough to. Well, who asked your opinion? Well, I'm sure of ain't I? Yeah, I've seen dog catchers make a better sheriff. Well, I don't have to stand here and be insulted in my own office. Then sit down. Red, Red. 
The sheriff has a right to his own opinion till we convince him otherwise. I had run into this kind of sheriff before. Well-meaning enough, but a little dumb. By the way, I wear a marshal's badge in my own county. Maybe you'd better swear me in as your deputy just in case anybody gets the idea of trying a necktie party. Yeah, I better. Tagger was pretty popular around these parts. Yes, he was. I wanted that deputy's badge so I could operate within the law. Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, I'll do all I can to help you, Mr. Deputy. You see, I read a great many detective stories, and I have a theory. Well, oh, that sounds very interesting. But I'd like to know what time Valera came to the hotel. At exactly five minutes to twelve. It was all very unusual, but I knew he was a friend of Miss Trini's, and she being one of our special pets. And what time did Tiger get here? At exactly 12 o'clock. I happen to know the exact time because I always have my cup of tea at 12. I see. And where was Trini all this time? At work, as usual. Oh, she has a perfect alibi. She left here at 10 o'clock to go to the saloon and didn't get home until daylight. It was she who discovered the murder. You never heard such screaming. Has anything in the room been disturbed? Heavens, no. I've read enough detective stories to know better than to let anyone do that. I'd like to take a look at the room. Oh, yes, sir. It's the last room on the left on this floor. You go right down to the end of the hall. Now, I have a theory. Yes, I'm sure you have, but do you mind if I listen to it later? My theory is that when Miss Trini sent those notes, she got her dates mixed up. And when Taggart found Valero, he... I had come to Trini's room hoping to find some lead, something to work on, and I found plenty. In the first place, the room was in perfect order, not the least sign of a struggle between Valero and Taggart. A note that I'd found on Taggart's body read exactly the same as the one Valera had given me. The dust on the sill had been disturbed. That could have been caused by someone crawling in through the window. A tall man could have pulled himself up without too much trouble. And sure enough, there were fresh heel marks in the dirt under the window. I began to see it. Someone had hid behind the door, waited for Valera, and hit him over the head with a gun, then taken his knife and killed Taggart when he came to the room. It was a smart piece of framing, but who was he, and why? Maybe Trina's notes would give us the answer. When I'd finished telling the sheriff and Red what I'd found out at the hotel... I'd swear that's the same handwriting in both notes. That's what Hoppy just got through telling you. Guess I better bring in Trini for questioning about the notes. No, not yet. I want to get another sample of her handwriting. And she can't lie about writing them. That'll be your job, Red. Just pretend that you've got a lot of money and uh, maybe you've had a little too much to drink. Oh, no, Hoppy. How can I do that? You know that dad ratted stuff always gives me the hiccups just the smell of it. <laughs> Try putting some cotton in your nose. Try putting some in your mouth, too. I keep you from talking so much. Why don't you shut up, Red? Now you got work to do. Get over to the saloon and have a talk with Trini. And I don't think Trini will be too hard to meet. Get out of here. given Red a few minutes start. I didn't want anyone to know that he was tied in with me. But Red has the habit of doing things the hard way. And I wanted to be near in case he made any slip up and got into trouble. The reason I wanted to talk to you, Miss Trini, was because you remind me so much of my little daughter Susie that was killed in a stampede. <laughs> there she was, riding at the head of a herd of stampeding cattle, her little golden curls waving in the wind. Riding to save the settlers. 
I thought you told me your daughter's name was Jenny. That was my other daughter. She was a pretty little thing, too. Blue eyes, golden hair. My boy. Oh, I've had a sad life, Miss Treaty. Hey, you. Do you mind taking your trouble somewhere else? You're disturbing our game. Don't you go telling me what to do, mister. I'm sorry if I disturbed your game, mister. It was just that my bereavement was too much for me. For two cents, I'd toss you out of here. Come on, Russ. It's your deal. You're holding up the game. Come on, Senor. We will bring to the memory of your daughter. Tell you what I'd like you to do, Miss Trini. I'd like you to give me a little memento of the occasion. Memento? Like what? Oh, like uh, maybe an autograph. You know, you, you write something on a piece of paper. Write with something nice. All right. What shall I say? Most Say to my dear friend Red, the man I'd most like to meet at midnight. This will remind you of your daughter? Oh, uh, yes. She used to like to go on midnight rides with me. <laughs> Read it to me. A mi querido amigo, el señor Rojo. That's in Spanish. Sure, I wrote him in Spanish. But I can't read Spanish. That makes us even. I do not know how to write in English. I knew that something had aroused the interest of the man named Ross, and I didn't know how far Red would go. Now that he was confused, I had to get him out of here in a hurry without tipping my own hand. Oh, right. If you don't like him in Spanish, we'd tear him up. Now that's a fine thing to do. After all the money I spent oh, on you, I know you've been drinking, but I think you've bothered this little lady about long enough. Now, get out of here and leave her alone. Well, come on, get out! If you hadn't handled that old coot, I'd have done it myself. Well, I thought it was about time to do something. Thank you, senor. I was beginning to get tired of him. And anyway, I like you much better. Maybe you would like Trini to buy you a drink, yes? No, thanks. Not right now. I got things to do. Here, buy yourself a couple of drinks. I may be back later. I hope so. Sorry I messed things all up, Hoppy. Guess I'm just no good. What are you talking about? Nobody could have done it any better. And what a liar. You were wonderful. I was? Well, sure. You proved that Trini couldn't have written those notes, didn't you? Did I do that? You certainly did. And now we're going to have to find out who sent those notes and why. That's an impossible task. Ah, uh, maybe not. Who brought the note to you? A man by the name of Ross. He's a gambler who hangs around the saloon. Yeah, I know who he is. What do you know about this Ross, Sheriff? Oh, not much. He rode into town a couple of weeks ago with a man named Bailey. Who's Bailey? Oh, he's a big man with... Chin whiskers, heavy sideburns. Does he have a knife scar on his right hand? I never noticed. You wouldn't. Now, Carlos, I want you to think hard. Were you and Tiger tied up in any way? We both like Trini. No, that's not what I mean. Is there any reason why anyone would want to get even with both of you? Not that I can think of. Wait a minute. You might have something. About six years ago, my father and Senor Taggart found out that a man by the name of Blake was smuggling arms across the border. Oh, I remember the case. Taggart and Don Ramon brought Big Blake in. He was convicted and sentenced for five years. Do you have the file on that case, Sheriff? Must be around here somewhere. Maybe in those old filing cases. Well, let's take a look. Two hours and a half dozen filing drawers later, I found what I was looking for. The picture and description of Blake was close enough to fit Ross's pal, Bailey. 
He could grow a beard, but that knife scar on his right hand would always give him away. Now we had a suspect and a motive. But how to prove that Blake, or Bailey as he called himself, had killed Taggart was the problem. Then an idea hit me. Hey, Sheriff. Is there some place nearby where we can hide Valera for a while? Yeah, I've got a little ranch house, three miles out the north road. Good. Red, use the back door, get down to the livery stable and hire a light wagon and bring it around the alley back of the jail. And bring a tarpaulin. Yeah. What? A tarp. Oh, you, you mean a tarpaulin. Look here, Cassidy, I don't like this high-handed business. What's the idea of thinking you can take my prisoner? Take it easy, Sheriff. I'm just trying to give you a chance to prove that you're smart enough to bring in the man who really killed Taggart. You willing to take a chance with me? I'll take a chance. Let him out. Be right back. All right, Sheriff. There you are, Carlos. I think you'll be all right here until I get back. As long as Red's here to take care of you. Yeah, you can depend on me, Hoppy. Sure. Maybe you better tie a string on it. Well, I better get back to town. You just take it easy. Vaya con Dios, Senor Hoppy. Thank you very much, Carlos. And if everything goes the way I hope it will, you'll be cleared of all charges in a few hours. Hasta luego. Yeah, hasta luego. <laughs> I wasn't half as optimistic as I'd made it sound. I knew that if Blake was my man, I was up against someone who was not only a cold-blooded killer, but a mighty smart one as well. All right, sir. On the way back to town, I told the sheriff everything I wanted him to do. When I was sure he had it down pat, I'd sent him ahead to slip into town the same way he'd left it. sheriff would be able to handle his end of the job. The chips were down and I'd have to play this game through to the last card. How about having that drink with me now? I'm busy right now. How about having a little talk? What about? Business. What kind of business? Cattle. Cattle's not my line. I'm not interested. Not even if they happen to be Carlos Valero's cattle? Guess what are you trying to say? Hey, everybody! Valero's escaped! He's heading south! I want a posse! Here's Shorty, you, Jack, Jim! Come on, Jim! Come on! Let me... They won't find him heading south, Blake. My name is Bailey. 
It wasn't when you were doing time in the federal penitentiary. No use to reach. Right now, you and I are playing on the same team. Want to listen to a proposition? If you got anything to say to me, let's go in the back room. I want to come right to the point, Blake. I can use you, and I think you can use me. What makes you think my name's Blake? The beard might have fooled me, but that knife scar on your hand was the tip-off. See, I had a friend who was serving a sentence at the same time and place as you did, so I know all about you. Go on. I'm listening. It wasn't hard to figure that you were here to even things up with Taggart and the son of your other enemy, Don Ramon. Why, you... Take it easy. I said we're on the same team. I want Valera out of the way as much as I think you do. And why all this talk? Let's follow the posse and get him. Wait a minute. The posse isn't going to catch up with him. I made sure the sheriff would lead him away from Valera. Are you crazy? No. I want you to go after Valera, alone. Huh? I'll tell you where he's hiding. And you're going to be a hero for tracking down and killing an escaping murderer. Where do you come in on this? It's simple. I'm going to bill a sale for a thousand head of Valera's cattle. He's got my draft for $10,000. Now, if I can get that money back without anybody knowing anything about it, I'll be that much ahead. Less the thousand I figure on giving you. Why don't you go out and get him and you draft yourself? Now, how would that look? I'm supposed to be his friend. You're a smart operator. No, I'm just lucky I have to be in town buying some cattle the same time you were here for your reason. Say I was willing to go along with you. How do I know you could lead me to Valero? I'm the one that talked the sheriff into hiding him in case anyone got lynch-minded. The sheriff thinks he can sneak Valera out to the county seat as soon as it gets dark. I'll play it your way. Then we'll have enough on each other that we'll both have to keep our mouths shut. Then it was you who knifed Taggart and framed Valera, huh? Yeah. You had it figured right. Get your hands up. I'm the law. You're under arrest. Lucky you got here when you did, Russ. Now we'll have to run for it. The sheriff is probably in on everything. You'll still be able to do what you came here for. Valera's out the sheriff's house with no one except that old windbag to take care of him. How do you know? I saw him and his partner sneaking a wagon out of town with the sheriff. I got suspicious and trailed him. We'll stop by and take care of Valero on our way to the border. Come on. I heard them leave the back room. I heard the sound of their horses galloping away. I couldn't move. But I had to get up and get them before they got to the sheriff's house. I had to. Shoot again. I'll give up. Come out in the open with your hands up.
that red? Right as rain, Hoppy. Carlos is, too. Thanks to you and Hoppy. <laughs> All right, Red, get the wagon. We're taking Blake on the first leg of a long, long trip. I'll help you. Well, Sheriff, I'll see the Valera gets home. Now, Posse will help you get Blake over to the county seat in the morning. And don't worry about a thing. You got enough evidence to evict him a dozen times. Thanks to you, Hoppy. I guess I won't be needing this anymore. Kind of wish you'd keep that badge. I might be needing your help again sometime. You just call and I'll be here. As for you, you big loud mouth, clumsy bold coot fool. Why are you lonely? Wait a minute. <laughs> You're welcome back any time, too. You're a darn good man to have around, particularly when the chips are down. <laughs> <laughs> I found that out a long time ago. So long, Sheriff. Goodbye, Hoppy. Come on, Riff. Bye, Sheriff. <laughs> Hop along Cassidy, hop along Cassidy, he'll return soon again, there's no use to say goodbye until then, hop along, here he comes, here he comes, there's the trumpets, there's the drums, here he comes, hop along Cassidy. Yes, I'll be glad to take care of it for you. Goodbye. Well, what can I do for you, Jane? Glad to see you haven't forgotten an old friend. Tom Stacy, meet Norm Blaine. Used to be Bill Fowler. Always glad to make the acquaintance of one of Fowler's old cellmates. What do you want? Who said we wanted anything? Just happened to read in the paper where you were engaged to marry Christine Russell, the... Uh, Daughter of the richest cattleman in these parts, so we dropped around to offer our congratulations for old time's sake. Thanks. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm very busy. Oh, now, that's no way to treat an old pal. You really got yourself a nice setup here. Treasurer of the Cattlemen's Association, gonna marry a Naris. Still, you shouldn't forget that you and me were pretty close at one time. I understand you two had a pretty sweet craft. What happened in the past is a dead issue. I've gone straight since serving out my time, and just in case there's any doubt in your minds, I'm still going to play it straight. Oh, sure, sure, Bill. That's the right way to do things. Sure, Paul was telling me he's sure glad to see you straighten yourself out. Then we have no further business with each other. None, except one little item. Watch yourselves. Good morning, Norm. Good morning, dear. Now, if there's anything further we can do for you, gentlemen, don't hesitate to call on us. There's a little cabin a couple of miles outside of Flat Rock. Meet us there after the office closes today. I'm not meeting you any place. Oh, yes, you are. And if you don't show, you're washed up in this town. And Miss Russell ain't gonna like that. We'll be seeing you. What did those men want from you, dear? Why do you ask that, Christine? Please, don't snap at me that way. It isn't at all like you. I didn't snap at you. Oh, if it sounded like it, I'm sorry. It's just that I have something on my mind, some business. Aren't you even going to ask me to sit down? Of course I am. Sorry. I came into town today to buy some things for our wedding. I thought you might like to hear what they are. I'm in no mood to talk about things like that now. Oh. Oh, it's just that I'm busy. You'll have to excuse me, please. Mr. Blaine? 
Forgive me, please, Christine. Mr. Blaine? Yes? Would you come here a minute? I'll be right there. Wait a moment. My sidekick, Red Connors, and I never fail to get keen delight out of our trips from the Bar 20 and the Twin Rivers. Most of the people were our friends, and only on rare occasions did anything out of the ordinary happen. On this trip, something very unpleasant was about to happen, although we didn't know it at the time. Watch them corners. One of these days, we're going to collide. <laughs> morning, Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Red. Young lady, this is the first time I've had a chance to congratulate you on your engagement. May I wish you all the good luck you could wish yourself. Thank you, Hoppy. The wife's peachy ain't going to be quite as flowery as his hobby, but the same goes for me, too. That's <laughs> nice of you, Red. Hoppy, do you know who those men are? I never saw them before. Why do you ask? Well, well, maybe it's only my imagination, but when I came here a few minutes ago to see Norman, those men were talking to him. Now, I couldn't hear what was being said, but, but I do know that Norman looks scared. And he isn't any coward, believe me, Hoppy. I know that. Well, anyway, after those men left the office, it was obvious to me that, that Norman, well, he wasn't quite himself. For the first time since we've known each other, he was downright curt and impatient with me. Oh, maybe it's important business, but he's probably just got a sour stomach. You know, if you just give him a little pinch of soda and some water, I take it all the time. <laughs> Would it make you feel any better if I tried to find out what was going on? Well, I, I really shouldn't butt into Norman's affairs. I, I have the utmost confidence in him, really, I do. Forgive me for taking up your time, Hoppy, and, and thank you just the same. Good morning. Good morning. Red and I had come into town on business for the Bar 20 Ranch, so we went about it. Busy as we were, what Christine had said stuck in my mind. I finally decided to check on the gentleman in question. I learned that they had registered as Lou Forler and Tom Stacy from St. Louis. I got off a telegram to the Missouri City, then Red and I decided to head back to the ranch. Hi, Norman. Howdy, Hoppy. Hi, you, Red. Hi, Norm. Hi, thing. Oh, fine. Fine. Everything's great. Well, so long. So long. He's got something on his mind besides his hat. Oh, now, Hoppy, you're getting worse than Miss Christine. Well, maybe so, but I still think we should find out where he's heading. I'm afraid something like this wasn't going to happen. I guess it ain't the first time I figured wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Probably won't be the last, either. Now, he's far enough away now. Let's go. But he's plenty scared, too. Well, why shouldn't he be? He's got everything to lose. Now you follow my lead. I'm with you.
Well, come in, partner. We were expecting you. We were interrupted this morning just when our little talk was getting most interesting. I don't know what you two are getting at, and what's more, I don't care. Whatever it is you've got on your mind, I don't want any part of it. That's pretty big talk for a guy who's in the spot you're in, eh, Lou? Too big. I'll have to take you down a few pegs. Oh, now, hold on, Lou. Rough stuff isn't going to get you anywhere. Well, it might, unless you're willing to listen to reason. All right, what's on your mind? That's better. Sit down. Now, make it short and sweet. We want $5,000. 5,000? Yeah. The Cattlemen's Association is a rich outfit. You being treasure shouldn't have any trouble getting your hands on that amount of dough. Oh, but you're insane. Why? It wouldn't be the first time you've taken money that didn't belong to you. Forget it. Now, wait a minute. Get this. You have $5,000 at this cabin by this time tomorrow, or you pack up and get ready to leave town. Yes, and after that, if we ever catch up with you, you'll wish you'd never been born. goes for you, too. Let's get out of here. All right, let's go. By the time Red and I regained consciousness, our quarry had taken flight. I decided on another step, the direct approach. I'm sorry, Harvey, but we're closed for the day. What were you doing out at that cabin? That cabin? What do you mean? Yeah, we saw you go in. We'd have seen you come out, too, except for some galoot stuck a bucket in my way. There's no use denying you were there with a couple of men. We saw you, just as Red says. They saw us, too. In a few hours, I'll have a telegram here telling me all about them. Yeah, Harvey's only trying to help you if you're in any trouble. He can do it, too, since he's a sheriff. Warner and Stacy are after you for something. All I can say is that you're all wet. Wait a minute. All they wanted was the association to unload some cattle for them. Oh, they could have talked about that while they were here. You didn't have to ride clear out there to talk about it. Norman, if you're afraid I'm going to find out about you being the next convict, forget it. I've known about it since the first day you got the Twin Rivers. You have? Certainly, I have. You'd be surprised how much Hoppy knows about what goes on around here. Well, then I guess I might as well tell you all about it. I wish you would. In the following hour, Norman told us the whole story of the land graft for which he and Forler were sent to prison, of their days in the penitentiary, and finally of his determination when he'd served out his time to come to Twin Rivers and make a fresh start. It wasn't a pretty story, but I had to admire the straightforwardness of the man. So you see, Hoppy, one mistake of the slightest scandal, and I'm all through in this locality. These people trust me, and I don't want to let them down. Neither my employers, my friends, nor Christine. I wouldn't want you to let them down either. I want to thank you for being so honest. 
Now I'll see what I can do for you. Yeah, that goes for me, too. Hoppy and me will think of something to do, won't we, Hoppy? Sure. Just to know that you're on my side helps a lot. We'll keep in touch with you. Well, thanks again. Right. I got a telegram here that says you two are clearing out of town. Yeah, and I got a lump on my head that says the same thing. What kind of a telegram says that, mister? It's from the warden of the Kansas State Penitentiary. Take a look. Well, this says I was paroled. But what you did today violates your parole. So I'm ordering you both out of town. Well, that says you're the sheriff here. And no cow town official is ordering me to do anything. Wait a minute. Nobody's going to call Hoppy a Cowtown official. Not while I'm around, anyway. You've got nothing on me. That telegram says so. So it does, but I got plenty on you today. Besides, I don't like the company you keep. So come along and nobody will get hurt. Sit tight, Tom. All right. I'm sitting tight. to pay for my broken dishes. How much is it, Morty? Well, two cups is not at least 68 cents. Pay her, Porter. <gasps> Five dollars. Just I... keep the change. Well, who's going to pay for the suppers? You know they ordered two whole suppers, Mr. Cassidy. Two whole suppers? Take it out of there. Come on, outside and on your horses. Fred, come on. I figured when Red and I rode Forner and Stacy out of town last night, the matter was closed and Norman Blaine's reputation insured. But I was about to find out how wrong I was. Something awful has happened, Hoppy. What is it, Chris? Well, last night Norman was visiting me. There was a knock at the door and he answered it. I couldn't see who was outside or hear what was said, but well, Norman appeared quite distressed. And then a moment later he told me he had to leave for a few minutes. What happened then? Well, he didn't come back last night. And when I went by his place a little while ago, he, he wouldn't let me in. In fact, he, he told me to go away. I'm afraid something's happened to him. That he's hurt or something. Maybe them fellers came back. I'm sure they did. Let's see what we can find oh, out. Thanks ever so much. Thanks again. Don't worry about it. Norman Blaine wasn't in his room. We promised to let Christine know when we found out anything. I thought we ought to try the office of the Cattlemen's Association. Norman! He did? Jumpin' mackerel. Did Porter and Stacy do this to you? They came to Christine's last night. What time was that? Around about 10 o'clock. We ran them out of town about 8. They must have hid out for a couple of hours and then sneaked back. You were at that cabin you saw us at yesterday. Go on. They beat me up for putting you on their trail. They gave me until 12 o'clock today to bring $5,000 out on the Flat Rock Road. Where on the Flat Rock Road? They didn't say. They said they'd meet me. Say, maybe we could surprise them and do the meeting ourselves instead of him. And do you think they'd show up? They're not that stupid. I guess you're right, Hoppy. Hoppy, I'm sunk. Why do you say that, Norman? In the first place, the association hasn't got $5,000. At least not where I could get my hands on it today. And in the next place, if they did have $5,000, I wouldn't steal it for Fuller and Stacy or for anyone else. Wait a minute. Maybe we can arrange to have them steal it. What? Oh, Hoppy's only joking. Imagine the sheriff fixing it for a couple of crooks to rob the Cattlemen's Association. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a big joke, doesn't it? But it's such a big joke that at 12 o'clock you're going to be riding on the Flat Rock Road. Huh? Now, come on, let's get that place fixed up. At 12 o'clock, Norman rode along the Flat Rock Road. The object was to keep the rendezvous with the two ex-convicts. My plan was for Norman to pretend to want to play their game. 
plead that they could get their 10,000, maybe even more, and still save Norman's reputation in Twin Rivers. Instead of stealing the money and turning it over to them, Norman promised to set the stage for them to hold up the office at the Cattlemen's Association. At first, this didn't sound good to the gentleman in question, but their greed got the better of them. They would be at the office at 3 o'clock sharp. Unfortunately, we underestimated the cleverness of Forler and Stacy. Instead of waiting until the appointed time to ride into Twin Rivers, they followed right on Norman's heels. Obviously, they had suspected the trap, and they agreed if it proved to be a trap, then Norman was to die. Christine, you've got to get out of here right away. I'm not moving an inch until you tell me what this mystery is all about. I'll tell you everything tonight. Now, please go. No. I want to know what happened to you and why. Oh, Chris, I'd have to tell you everything about it anyway before we got married. Three o'clock. Let's move in now. Take it easy. We'll wait. There's your answer. We'll wait. After what I've done, I couldn't blame you for calling off our engagement. I don't deserve anyone as fine as you. Naturally, I'd hate to lose you, but... Oh, my dear. How can you think I'd ever let you go? What you did years ago doesn't matter. Since we've known each other, you've... you've been fine and honorable and brave. Why, well, what you're doing now is just about... just about the bravest thing I ever heard of. Oh, but darling, I'm afraid. If the plan you and Hoppy have made should turn out wrong... Oh, but it can't go wrong. It's all arranged. That'll be Hoppy now. On the dot. It's just one o'clock. Hoppy and me's always on the dot. That's the way we work. Chris, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. I'm staying here, Hoppy. But you can't do that. It's all right, Hoppy. Chris knows the whole story. She understands everything. Well, I'm glad she does, but we don't know what's going to happen here in the next couple of hours. You'll have to leave, Chris. It's too dangerous. Please. I understand. I'll go. Oh, wait a minute. You better go out the front door just in case they're watching the place. You're right. Please be careful, all three of you. Leave the door unlocked. Well, Red and I'll be in this closet. You'll be at your desk. Where's Sandy? Oh, I gave him the day off. He won't be back till tomorrow. Good. After three and no sign of them. They said they'd be here at three o'clock. I guess they're smarter than we thought they were. Well, what happens now? I guess we just wait. They were almost smart enough, but not quite. Porter decided we had called off the trap, or else there had been none in the first place. He decided to move in on Norman Blaine. You know, I'd bet a suit of last year's underwear against an old broken washboard that they're still out there in that cabin. That's pretty reckless gambling. What makes you so sure? My instinct never fails me. In this case, that's a good sign. In the safe. Open it up. It's already open. It better be.
Get your hands on the table and keep them there. Closet. You're in no position to give orders, mister. Keep them covered, Red. Come in, Mr. Stacy. You're just in time for the party. Only it's going to be over at the jail. All right, Red, come on, let's take them. Get into the closet. Nice work. Get the money. case of attempted robbery, as our friend over there will be willing to testify. Hoppy, how can I ever thank you enough? Or I. You don't have to. Just be happy in the fact that your troubles are all over. You're wrong there, Hoppy. Norm's troubles ain't over yet. Well, how do you figure? Easy enough. You're getting married, ain't you? There he goes, on his way, down the moonlit trail to where cowboys reign. Hop along, Cassidy. Hop along, Cassidy, he'll return soon again. There's no use to say goodbye until then. Here he comes, here he comes. There's the trumpets, there's the drums, here he comes. Hop along, Cassidy, here he comes. Connors, my sidekick, and I were making a leisurely ride home from Railhead when we got our first inkling of trouble. Everything had been unusually quiet in our county, so we took the time to attend to some business for the Bar 20 Ranch. Red and I don't have to do a lot of talking. We pretty much understand each other. Anyway, we hadn't said anything for several miles. And all at once, I saw it, and we reined in. burn down the rest of the place. But you've got us all wrong, miss. Oh, no, I haven't. This time I've got you just right. Right where I want you. But, ma'am. I'm not ma'am. Well, then, uh, miss, uh, you see, ma'am, we're, uh, this is Hopalong and Cassidy, and we're here to help you. Papa. Who are these men? This man claims to be Hopalong Cassidy. Yeah. 
put your gun over you, Lily. I never met the gentleman, but more than once I've seen him. I see you've had some trouble here, Mr. Uh... Vandermeer. Vandermeer? You're new here? Yeah. Uh -huh. I think I understand. Oh, you'll never understand what we've been through in the three years since we settled Lily, here. please. Uh, gentlemen, let us go into the bunkhouse to talk. My boy is lying there. He's been shot. I'll take a look at him. Oh, Papa, now that there's someone to help you, I'll ride at the bucking mule for Dr. Peterson. Well, allow me, ma'am. Oh, well, it won't, it won't be too much trouble, Mr. Uh, Connor, just call me Red. I'm Hopalong's pal. Thank you, Red. He's been unconscious. Only a little while. It didn't look so bad at first. Well, it's not too serious. It isn't bleeding badly. That slug's still in there. Just what did happen here? Oh, so many things have happened. I wish we'd never heard of this terrible ranch. Yeah, she's quite right. But now we give up and go back to Kansas. A man can take only so much, Mr. Cassidy. But what, what started all this trouble? Uh, sit down and I'll tell you the whole story. We have to wait anyhow for the doctor. The Vandermeers told how they had come from Holland seven years before. They had settled on a farm in Kansas, but soon heard the call of the West and settled here on land obtained from the government. They worked hard, tried to be thrifty. When their ranch prospered, the other, less successful ranchers became hostile. At first, they warned Vandermeer that foreigners weren't welcome here. When he replied that this country was discovered, explored, and expanded by foreigners, their threats turned into violent action. I recalled hearing six months before that some of Vandermeer's cattle were mysteriously poisoned. Still later, Vandermeer riding in the hills was attacked and severely pistol whipped. And today? Early this morning, some men rode in and began to shoot up the place. Klaus, who was at the woodshed, returned the shots. These men set fire to the shed. You can see what they did when he tried to run for safety. Well, what about the other ranchers? Have you tried to get them to help you? <laughs> Who would help us? They don't want us here. Besides, there doesn't seem to be any law here. What does a sheriff in this county and there's a judge in Bucking Mule? <laughs> the sheriff, that's a laugh. He's right in with the rest of them. As for the judge, we've tried to get him to help us, but, but will he lift a finger? He will not. Am I right, Papa? Yeah, Lily. So when Klaus is well enough, we pack up and go back, where we can live in peace again. But you can't allow yourself to be scared off. You have the same rights as everybody else. And to my way of thinking, the least of them is worth fighting for. But there are too many again. Your friend is coming back. But without the doctor. The doctor don't come. Delivering a baby. He can't get here until later. I've got to get that bullet out of there. Would you please give me some boiling water? Red, you better get him out of here. When I worked over Claus, I wondered who was at the bottom of Vandermeer's troubles. I disliked anyone using the flimsy excuse that Vandermeer was a foreigner to cheat him out of his holdings. It wasn't honest or ethical. It wasn't American. May I help? No, I think I'd better do this alone. Thank you. You wouldn't have a cup of coffee, would you, ma'am? Oh, yes, I do have. How about you, Papa? No, I wait. Come along. They 
are coming back. Who? They can look. Vladimir! Hey! I recognize any of them. The ringleader is Simon Cosgrove. Cosgrove? I've run across him before. He operates a little ranch around here. He's done some cattle rustling, too. Hey, Vandermeer! What I do, Mr. Cassidy? You go out and talk to him. Invite him in the house. Leave the rest to me. I do what you say, but I feel better if I don't do it. Go on, hurry now. I hear you had a little trouble out here today. Those masks didn't fool me, Cosgrove. I know you shot my boy. That you got to prove. Anyway, that's not why I come out here. So why did you come back? I'm ready to buy this place. I don't think you can offer me enough. But uh, let's go inside. We talk it over. Yeah? Take it easy, boys. I know. So I'll buy you out for a dollar an acre. Lock, stock, and barrel. You are joking, Cosgrove. Five hundred dollars for everything? The cattle, the horses, the land, and equipment? Take it or leave it. I ain't such a big fool like that. You're making a mistake. He's doing exactly right. You can keep your nose out of this, Cassidy. You and that numbskull sidekick of yours. I wonder how you'd look without any teeth. Wait a minute, Red. Cosgrove, this isn't the first time you pulled a stunt like this, but it's gonna be the last. Mr. Vandermeer is keeping this ranch, and you and your boys are gonna let him strictly alone. You're just a small-time rancher in my books, Cassidy. Your talk don't mean a thing. If you think it's just talk, why don't you start something? It's a good idea, but I'll pick the time and place. the deal's off. And get on your horses. You're asking for trouble, Cassidy. Sticking your nose in where it don't concern you. You're gonna get it. I'll be around. Get out of here. Indications pointed to a well-organized conspiracy against the industrious Dutchman Vandermeer. It seemed to include the sheriff and the local judge, who had taken an oath to enforce and defend the law. Red and I rode into Bucking Mule. You're John Vandermeer's lawyer, is that right? It is. We're friends of his. This is Red Connors. My name is Cassidy. So you're Hopalong. That's right. Say, I've heard a lot about you, but never had the pleasure before. Come in, sit down. Fine. Well, needless to say, right now, Vandermeer needs friends. So we hear. Oh, he's been getting a raw deal. Pretty raw deal. I tried to do what I can, but I can't go into court without a clear-cut case. 
And you think Vandermeer had in the clear-cut case? That's right. You see, the men who caused him trouble have always been masked. He may suspect their identity, but he can't prove it. What can we do to help Vandermeer? I don't know right off. But I'll dig right in and find an angle. You can depend on that. I'll do everything I can to protect his rights. Well, if you're looking for a starting point, you might swear out a warrant for Simon Cosgrove. What makes you think he's mixed up in this? We don't think. We know. Well, I'll check with Vandermeer. If he wants to swear out a complaint, I'll handle it. Oh, in the meantime, where can I get hold of you, just in case? There's a line cabin up back of Vandermeer's place. We'll hold up there. Good, good. Well, I'll get in touch with you if anything happens. Thanks. Maybe I should have been a lawyer. What brought that on? Well, a lawyer can stay neutral and still help people. What makes you think he's going to help? Well, you heard what the man said. Well, what he says and what he means are two different breeds of horses. Well, sometimes it makes me sore. What makes you sore? You always disagree with me and you're always right. Oh, cheer up, Red. Someday the unexpected may happen. Come on! I just saw Cassidy riding out of town. What do you want? He wants a warrant sworn out for you. Well, if he hadn't interfered, Vandermeer would be on his way to Kansas or dead. And you and I would own that ranch right now. Cassidy isn't stopping me. Well, that's easy for you to say. You sit here and twiddle your thumbs while I take all the risks. Anyway, we can't do anything with Cassidy on the loose. He's always showing up at the wrong time in the right places. So now's our chance to get rid of him. Oh, just like that. So now's our chance to get rid of him. How? I know where he's heading. Oh. Well, that's different. When I build a fire in the summertime, I usually have something to cook. Well, we're cooking up something. Where is it? I'll probably be along in a minute. What'll be along in a minute? Cosgrove's men. See, one of us talking the wrong language. Why do you suppose Hicks was so anxious to find out where we're going to hold up? Well, so if he wanted to tell us anything, he'd know where we were. No, he and Cosgrove were back of all this trouble. Who? Oh. But why the fire? So they'll see the smoke and think we're here. We ain't here? Right. We're out there. I don't get it. You will. Come on. Red and I hid out near the line cabin. Before long, Cosgrove's men showed up. The trap we'd waited for was working perfectly. Instead of trying to help Vandermeer save the ranch, however, the lawyer advised him to clear out right away as a U.S. Marshal was coming for him. Come on.
According to Hicks, Vandermeer was wanted by the immigration authorities for fraudulent entry into the United States. Red and I made the fast trip to Railhead to send a telegram. When we got back to Bucking Mule, matters began to come to a head. I'm going in to see Hicks. Be sure and warn me if anybody shows up. Oh, sure, sure, Hoppy, you know me. That's what worries me. Remember what happened last time, Cosgrove? Where's Hicks? I wouldn't know. I'm waiting for him myself. Sit down, Cassidy. Maybe we can make a deal. The same kind of a deal Vandermeer's getting? He's getting just what he deserves. Folks here about don't cotton the foreigners. That's a lie, and you know it. You're the only one that doesn't want him around here. Because you want that ranch. I happen to know I talked to the folks down at Railhead. They'll feel differently about it when they find out Vandermeer's in the United States illegally. Where did you dig that up? From the U.S. Marshal, only a couple of hours ago. You finally stuck your neck out, didn't you? Get him out! Outside. Just a minute. Back in the saddle, boys, we're riding. Hoppy. Yeah, Red. Gee, I'm sorry, Hoppy. Oh, that's all right. I thought I told you to stay outside, though. Why did you come busting in like that? Oh. I wanted to warn you. Them fellas found their horses and they're looking for us. Found the horses? Their horses weren't in the street and I had no doubt where they had gone and to what purpose. I decided Red and I had to do some tall riding. While Red and I again rode toward Vandermeer's ranch, lawyer Hicks was making the last bold play on behalf of Cosgrove and himself. Is a frame up. Did they head toward Bruxton? Yes, they've only been gone about five minutes. Come on, Rat. Vandermeer and his captors. I told Red when the shooting started to grab Vandermeer and hurry him back to his ranch. Red begged to stay with me, but I figured someplace up ahead was an ambush, and I didn't want Vandermeer to fall into that.
caught a glimpse of Cosgrove and his men coming out of the hills. During the exchange of shots, Cates decided to make a break and for some unknown reason headed back to Vandermeer's place. That suited me fine, especially when I saw Cosgrove and his men follow Cates and me. Glad to see you, Marshal. I started out the minute I got your telegraph. This one who claims to be my deputy? Yeah, that's him with his bare face hanging out. I'll take special care of him. On your horse. There's another one for you. You too. Well, you're in the clear, Mr. Vandermeer. You're not wanted on any charge. <laughs> we thank both of you for helping us in our troubles. Oh, we had fun. Red and I always enjoy a fight when it's for a good cause. I'm sure your troubles are over now. We'll always be deeply grateful to you. Uh, Marshal, can we help you over to the railhead with your prisoners? Sure thing, Hoppy. Goodbye until then. 